Hey guys, let's talk about how to use action tags in dialog. And I want to get right to it and jump over to my screen share. Guys, let's talk about how to use action tags in dialog. There's a lot to cover here and I want to go as quickly as possible so that you get all the information that you need to completely master this topic. So what are action tags? Well, action tags are any character actions and gestures. Some authors even include character thoughts, like introspective thoughts and feelings, with action tags. For example, he lifted the gun. Okay, talk. The he lifted the gun is the action tag in that sentence. And I just wanted to give you that example. Now let's talk about how to use action tags. There's actually lots of ways First of all, action tags can add variety and spice up some dialogue. So you can also replace dialogue tags, which are like he said, she said. You can replace those dialogue tags with action tags, with behaviors and actions. You can also use action tags to create and reveal character subtext, like what's the emotion, the tone, the intention behind the words that the character is speaking. You can also use action tags to reveal story subtext, so deeper meanings in the actual story. You can establish a scene. A character can interact with the setting. You can also establish the setting. Um, by having that character opening doors, walking down hallways. Again, you can establish the scene or the, set, the setting. You can also create and alter pacing. So the more action tags in, in dialogue, typically the slower the dialogue will be to the reader. Also, you can foreshadow. You can have a character picking up a weapon like a gun. You can foreshadow all kinds of things, threats and promises by action tags. You can also create world building. So if there's magic or superpowers in your story, you can have a character perform magic and reveal that in your action tags. Let's look at some examples of how to use action tags in a story. So what you're seeing on the on the screen is actually my novel. It's actually a Kindle version of my novel, Wicker Hollow. And I wanted to go through and just show you some real life examples because I don't know about you, but I learn best by seeing actual examples in process, in person. So there's a couple of different examples I want to look at, and I'm going to highlight the action tag. So when somebody says, I'm leaving you, she said and stood up, the action tag is standing up or stood up in that sentence. Let's jump over to a whole different scene in the story where a main character is interacting with a demon. So at the bottom of the screen, you might see the dialogue that starts with, over there in that tent, the demon pointed one lanky finger. The demon pointed one lanky finger is the action tag, the, the behavior and the gesture of a character in the story. Another example, Katie, he whispered, moving toward her. Moving towards her is the gesture, is the action tag. Okay, that's probably enough examples. There's also this question of where to place your action tags. You can place your action tags in your sentence before the dialogue, in the middle of the dialogue, and after the dialogue. And depending on the placement and position of that action tag, it's going to change certain characteristics of that sentence and it's going to change the reader's experience. You really can learn so much information about a character just for some simple gestures and a little bit of action. Okay, let's talk about how to punctuate an action tag. I said we can also put the action tag before the dialogue so you can have your action tag, some kind of punctuation, and then the dialogue. So you can put the action tag, the gesture, or the action, the behavior, before the dialogue. And I want to show you a quick example of what that might look like. Check out this example. It comes from Come, Comes the Dragon by C.S. Lakin. A muscle in Aaron's face twitched. They are not free to trust while Azetta is still in power. You can see in red font the action tag. I've Put it in red font just so you it would stand out to you in this example. Okay, you can also put the action tag in the middle. You can either interrupt dialogue or just 
put a short pause for a behavior or gesture in between two lines of dialogue. So you can have dialogue, some form of punctuation, usually a comma or a period, an action tag, and then more dialogue. You can have dialogue, action, and then more dialogue. You can put the action tag in the middle, sandwiched in between two lines of dialogue. Here's an example of that. I didn't want to do it. Mike dropped his empty syringe on the lawn. It just kind of happened. You can see again in red font, the action tag sandwiched in between those two lines of dialogue. Then you can also put the action tag after the dialogue. So you can have your dialogue, some form of punctuation, like a comma or a period usually, and then the action. So dialogue, behavior and gestures. You can put the action tag after, just like in this example. Go. I don't want you here anymore. His eyes return to the dark screen of the TV. Okay, let's look at some action tag mistakes. There are definitely some things that authors can do on accident that create problems with action tags. Now, the main thing I want you to think about with action tags is always to think about the reader's experience. Ultimately, how the reader experiences the scene, the sentence, and the dialogue matters most. Okay, here are the major or most common mistakes that I see with action tags. First of all, Re authors sometimes use way too many action tags. It gets overwhelming, it gets repetitive, and it just gets in the reader's way of enjoying the dialogue. Authors also sometimes don't use any action tags. They just never use action tags, and that, to me, is just as much as a problem as using too many. So, also, another mistake is using distracting action tags that don't really make sense for the character or don't really make sense for the scene. Just anything that distracts from the actual reading experience. Then there's using cliche action tags, kind of tropey things, like maybe every character is just nodding or shrugging or blinking in, throughout the dialogue, throughout the story. So try to avoid those tropey cliche action tags. You're going to probably use some of them just because they're so common, but just Try to pay attention to it and limit those kinds of action tags. Also, some people use really long action tags. I would really recommend that your action tags be short, no more usually than a few words. Try to keep your action tag to one line uh, on a page or a screen. Once your action tag goes over one line, becomes two lines, your action tag starts to seem like a paragraph, and it just goes on and on and on and it, and it can be way too long and again distract the reader from having an enjoyable experience so try to keep your action tags short most of the time sometimes authors use unclear action tags they just write behaviors and gestures that don't really make any sense like the reader can't really understand exactly what the character is doing again try to be very clear so that your reader can focus on the dialogue and focus on the scene and focus on the story. Next, sometimes authors use action tags that contradict characterization. So if a character suddenly is doing something that contradicts everything the reader knows about that character up to that point in the story, that can be distracting. That can knock the reader out of the experience of the story. Also, try to use action tags that match the pace that you want for the dialogue. Some dialogue is more snappy, it's more ping pong back and forth, and in that instance you probably want to limit the amount of action tags. When you do use action tags in a snappy dialogue, you probably want those action tags to be very short. Two to three words at most, like he blinked or she shrugged. And try not to repeat the same action tags too many times in the same story. Again, it can be distracting, it can be repetitive, and it can lower the reader's experience of your story. Okay, let's look at a summary of action tags. First of all, action tags are just gestures and behaviors that any character might do in a story, the protagonist or antagonist, any character in the story. And it's helpful to use a variety of action tags and use action tags for subtext, for revealing scenes, setting, 
and even world building. As always, if you liked this video, please hit the like button. And if you're not yet a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button for more videos about writing better and publishing faster and all kinds of videos about how to make money online as a writer. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'll see you at the next one.